Good afternoon, uh, the dear audience. Welcome yet again to another webinar organized by uh, Cavendish University, Uganda. Uh, my name is David Mutawanura, the Executive Director of the University and uh, facilitator for today's webinar. Uh, I would like to begin by congratulating you on uh, completing 2018. Uh, where, if you recall, we had our initial engagement um, on this very platform. Today, I will be running you through the topic, why choose Cavendish University? You will agree with me that there are many universities in uh, Uganda, indeed in Africa, and elsewhere. Um, so I'll be, I'll be showing you how our university is uniquely placed to enhance your career aspirations towards employability and entrepreneurship. So I invite you also to invite uh, colleagues to join on today's uh, live session so that we can have a richer uh, interactive session uh, than even the last time and I should remind you that today is another session of a series that our university will be having with our audience uh, and everybody out there on a number of uh, topics mainly dwelling on higher education so while we wait for the others to join us I thought to begin with uh, an introduction on what universities do, what are their functions, why do they exist. The first function of a university is teaching and learning. I think that is commonly known to us that uh, at the university you go and upgrade your education from higher uh, school to um, bachelor level, diploma level, certificate, um, PhD, and so on. The second function of universities is, first of all, um, generating, but also storing and sharing skills and technologies, new skills, new technologies, what someone might call research. The third function of a university, particularly in, um, in today's world, is, uh, is what is called community engagement. So here we are talking about mentoring, preparing, engaging minds in preparation for a very dynamic environment that we are in um, and the community um, the community service that is expected of, of, uh, of everyone really you could also include things like uh, public policy engagements and things of the like so uh, I would like at this point to pause and first recognize that uh, we've been joined by Salisu Malami uh, from Sokoto in Nigeria. Uh, there is also Maria Banks Ane from South Sudan. Thank you for the greetings. And we'll be expecting more of you to join us for today's session. So going back to why you should choose Cavendish University, have, and also having understood the functions of universities, I thought to point us to the primary function of universities, which is uh, teaching and learning. And this, because it's very important, it leads me to the next uh, definition, which is what is an academic model. Because an academic model, in simple terms, is a 
a set of processes, structures, values that uh, demonstrate a university's approach to teaching and learning. And uh, here I would also then like to take us to the one of Cavendish University, the academic model of Cavendish University, because ideally that is what distinguishes each institution. In our case, uh, Cavendish University is unique in its teaching and learning by way of processes, structures, uh, values, philosophies um, surrounding our teaching and learning. We are different from the other universities in the sense that uh, at the top of everything we do, we are aiming in our mission to transform students into responsible, educated, employable, and entrepreneurial citizens. We do this using six uh, hinges or pillars that we do uniquely at our university the primary of which is being student-centric, and I will come back to that to show how we are, we are very student-centric and we distinguish ourselves from the other universities. And on the basis of that, I would encourage uh, prospects to come and explore to join our university. So we're very student-centric at the heart of everything that we do. But beyond that, we also have quality programs, very uh, quality uh, lecturers or faculty as uh, others call them. We've got a very unique uh, learning platform. We have got efficient processes and we're very responsive to student needs. And I'll be elaborating more on those uh, pillars of our institution that sort of create the definition of what Cavendish University is that is different from the others. I see there is a greeting jumbo from uh, Svetlana in uh, Nairobi. Svetlana, uh, greetings by return and thanks for joining us for today's call uh, and video where I am trying to explain to our audience why they should choose Cavendish University, Uganda. As I mentioned earlier on, this is the second of a series of uh, webinars that will be running, facilitated by our academic and non-academic leadership, maybe at a point later, even our students, our alumni, to give uh, our audience an opportunity to understand how our university functions, but also just dealing with contemporary issues to do with higher education, sharing ideas, uh, and exploring opportunities that exist. Ivo Ruheka, greetings from Tanzania. Thanks, Ivo. Tandiwe Msoni, hi, CUU. CUU stands for Cavendish University, Uganda. It's an acronym for Cavendish University, Uganda. And uh, Tandiwe is uh, shouting out from our sister university in uh, Zambia, CUZ, as we call it, Cavendish University, Zambia. I see also greetings from uh, Juba, Alberto Rosi, Elias. Alberto says this, this is his university. Madam Janet is the lecturer in computer networking and computer repair. That's great to know. And again, like I said earlier at the start, we would encourage uh, those of you who are online to uh, invite your colleagues to uh, join in for this live session, because I will be elaborating a bit uh, more on um, how our university is unique in terms of fulfilling the core function of a typical university, which is learn, teaching and learning differently from the other institutions. I would say at a very high level that the teaching and learning at our university is, 
is very innovative. As you'll see later when I explain to you about our learning platform, the blended learning that we deliver, etc., and the technology that supports this whole teaching and learning. It is also very participatory. We encourage uh, every, every student to participate, but also the lecturer to have uh, a, an exchange with students not one direction because today there is all sorts of information that is readily available on the internet and and uh, you can't assume that a, a student comes empty in their head to to pick whatever they are they are being taught so there will be there will always be some challenge uh, from the students we encourage active participation at our university and above all we are very practical so typically and for every course that is done at our university as part of a program a student will have an opportunity to to have practical sessions uh, i'll give you an example of our our journalism uh, program our bachelor of journalism and communication studies where we have got a a studio where our students can practice their skills and this gives them enough time when the studio is uh, free for them to explore their talents and prepare themselves adequately for for the job market because again this is how we differentiate ourselves by creating practical platforms for our students to prepare themselves for the job market our health science students and our environmental health science students have got facilities, laboratory facilities, that enable them to undertake practicals in a whole host of health sciences. In that way, they prepare themselves for the world out there. They don't just go with the knowledge, but also some skills, some practical capabilities to start them out in their, in their workplaces. Of course, we have internship opportunities during the time that a student is at our university, particularly for bachelor students. Every bachelor student has a chance to undertake an internship, which gives them a chance to engage in a very uh, real life working situation. We support our students with, um, with internship by engaging with strategic partners on employability initiatives. For instance, at the moment, we have an engagement with Barclays and NFT, which is Uganda's leading HR consultancy, where they train our students on how to conduct themselves in a real employment situation. In this way, we are enhancing their employment uh, prospects, which, as you can imagine, is the next step after university. But not just employment, we also undertake training uh, on entrepreneurship in these, in these initiatives. I think by end of uh, 2019, we hope to have trained over 1,000 students on this program alone. And it is important to note that there is a promise that 70% of the people that have undertaken this program can easily find employment in, uh, in, within organizations that are partnering with NFT Consult for employment uh, matters. So, getting on with uh, explaining more about our academic model. I told you earlier on, for those who are joining us, this will benefit you, that an academic model is, is a definition 
of how a typical university delivers value to its customers who are students differently from the others it shows a set of processes and structures and and values that are practiced at the university in support of teaching and learning which is the core work uh, core function of a university particularly in the social economics setup that we are in here in Uganda and how do you do that differently from the others so at our university here in Cavendish we have identified six areas including being student centric running quality programs having experienced and quality lecturers using fast in market education technology being very responsive to our students and other stakeholders and being uh, practice having efficient processes so starting with student centricity student centricity in a nutshell is making sure that whatever we do at our university particularly with respect to teaching and learning keeps the student at the center of all the things that we do at our university our mission is to provide quality research driven education that transforms students into responsible educated employable and entrepreneurial citizens and we do this by ensuring that our teaching and learning methods enhance skills that will lead to employability and entrepreneurship and i'll give you examples at our university we ensure that you will beyond your subject specific skills you will be able to to communicate effectively you will be digitally literate you will be able to work in teams you will think critically you will be the sort of person that asks the right questions that demands evidence a person that is committed to active and lifelong learning these are all beyond your subject specific skills that you learn for instance if you are doing law you would you would have the subject specific skills that i would be meaning here are, are law skills legal skills um, things like understanding how constitutions are written and and interpreted uh, or how you handle criminal justice and so on those are very subject specific but beyond that today's market demands that you should be able to possess communication skills presentation skills and an example is this year we have launched a product called cubicle which enhances the the it skills it and data skills of, of every student uh, by using very uh, commonplace tools such as microsoft office it seems like a very basic uh, tool but we i have heard uh, before that most people use only about two percent of the microsoft office capabilities so at our university we are ensuring that our students are able to use microsoft excel microsoft powerpoint very effectively because these are skills that are very much in demand in today's marketplace so 
beyond so so having an interest in in the employability as well as entrepreneurship of our students and how they get transformed into those capabilities i think is very very important for us at our university and we undertake so many initiatives to enhance that i already mentioned that the, t the teaching and learning at our university is is uh, practical it is innovative we promote innovation it is active it is participatory so every student has got a chance to practice what they are learning in class and to engage with each other as well as with the lecturer um, in order to to succeed our curricula are always up to date and in line with the market requirements all these are ways in which we ensure that we are we are student centric we do not just uh, present a curriculum for our students that will not get them the ultimate objective of uh, proceeding from from the university i'll pause a bit and uh, see if there are any questions or comments, contributions from any of the people that are joining us for today's live session. I see we have, we have 24 people that are joining on today's call. Honorable Abdul Kadir, Abshir Omar, he says he's proud of his university, my university. He says, great. Uh, thanks, Honorable Abdul Kadir. Then there's Monduk Jok Won. Viva CUU. Okay, then there is uh, Jok Wall. Jok Wall, long live Cavendish University, Uganda. Okay, that's good. Thanks for these comments. Manun Kur says, can't wait for the commencement of next semester. Oh, so I should tell you, we are starting on Monday the 28th of January, of January. That is in two weeks from now, or roughly about 10 days. Next Monday the 21st, we'll be having orientation for the day students. And on the weekend, we'll be having on 27th. January will be having the orientation for our weekend students, including the working adult, those who are on the working adult program. Honorable Honorable Abdul Kadir Abshir, be forever. It's where my success started. Thank you so very much, and I wish and I will stand always for you. Yeah, and then. Uh, Salisu says Nabanja, my best lecturer. That's Teddy. Teddy Nabanja. Then Jane and all my lecturers at IT department. Yes, at Cavendish University. At Cavendish University, we uh, we keep a very, very close contact with our students, the lecturers and students, to ensure that that if there are specific needs of students, they are addressed at all times. There is a question from Samuel Aguta on, on whether our university offers accommodation. Now, our university, I didn't mention earlier on, but we have got a campus in, on Gaba Road. That is opposite the American Embassy. And we also have got another campus, the Law Campus, in Acacia, in uh, the Kamocha area. And they are accommodation options, various accommodation options at each of these locations. We have got memoranda of understanding with these, uh, some of the, of the accommodation services providers, and we can always point you to the right point, the right place for accommodation if you would like to, to have, if you are in need of accommodation, and particularly for for our international students, we know that this is very important. William Pan says, "Really, su real success begins at Cavendish Viva CUU."
to make success to brighter future generations in Africa and the world. That's correct. We've got, uh, we are always in touch with our alumni and we encourage more of the alumni to get in touch with us as you are doing for today's live session. On our website, we have got an alumni relations link that you can click on and engage with us on, uh, on the link. Um, we normally have alumni dinners and other alumni activities where we interface with, the, with our alumni. And we know that in future it will be an important avenue also to help the existing students in terms of promoting their employment and their employability as well as entrepreneurship. Because we anticipate that some of you, our alumni, will have started your own enterprises and you can mentor the ones that are starting out. Sam Ofula has got a question as to whether we are starting out in Tororo. Now, we are not yet in Tororo, as a matter of fact, but we have got out, regional outreach centers, three regional outreach centers in three corners of Uganda. We have got a regional outreach center in Barara, which started last year to serve our potential students in the Western region. We have got, for the purposes of, of uh, the person from Tororo, we have got a, an outreach center in Soroti, which serves the East, and we also have a, an outreach center in Gulu, in Gulu town, to cater to the interests of people that are in Northern Uganda. Then, uh, Aguta Okwena is asking if the library is open 24 hours. I will say yes and no. Yes, in the sense that we have got an e-library that is open throughout um, the time of your choice. We have got millions of, of journals, articles, books that are available 24 hours at, the, at, the, at your choice, the time of your convenience. So to that extent, our electronic library is open 24 hours. Our physical library is open for, uh, from 8 a.m. up to 6 p.m. And that is for physical, if somebody would like to have physical books, textbooks in the library or to use our facilities in the library. We have got a couple of computers in our, in our library, in our physical libraries. Actually, not library. We've got libraries at every campus location so our students can access IT services as well as physical books, hard copies at each of our campus locations. Maria Banks Ane asks, when is graduation? The date is not yet firmed up for graduation, but we think it will be in the month of March, as it has always been in, uh, in our tradition. So plan around the month of March, but within the next maybe two weeks, we should be able to communicate the actual date for graduation. And uh, I imagine Maria is looking forward to graduation. I will come to the point of graduation and what kind of services that we, we offer for students that are graduating beyond preparing them for, for employment as well as entrepreneurship in class but we also have services that we offer in terms of ensuring that they have got their certificates and transcripts right on the day of graduation laniero linda it's true success begins at cavendish discipline focus and hard work thanks phyllis Peke. oh lord i miss my job i miss my team <laughs> Phil, it's nice hearing from you. Phyllis was uh, a colleague of ours working in the IT department. Phyllis, you're welcome to come and have a fresh conversation with us. Uh, and I'm happy that you joined on today's, on today's live session. Abdi Wahid Hussein is asking whether we have got, uh, whether we offer degrees in uh, electrical engineering now we do not as of the present moment offer degrees in electrical engineering but we have got a variety of uh, 
science programs, including the Bachelor of IT, Information Technology, the Bachelor of Computer Science. We have got, at the moment, we have students that are completing their bachelor's degree in telecommunications engineering. And, uh, but it is something that we could consider in the future if we are able to find that it is uh, market relevant and that uh, we can get it accredited. Which brings me to the next point on our academic model, one of the underpinnings of our academic model, which is quality programs. The programs that we offer at our university are all accredited. We ensure that we do enough research on these programs and that we can ascertain that they are market relevant. All that helps in terms of preparing you for your uh, employability as well as entrepreneurship. The programs that we offer are well prepared by experts. The curriculum is, is relevant. They all have course guides. The course guides also help you in terms of understanding how every every part of the course prepares you for the study outcomes, but also it gives the details on a week by week to enable you to prepare yourself. It has the contacts for the lecturer that is providing the course, that is facilitating the course, and this helps you to engage with the lecturer via email or phone at uh, uh, appropriate times to get further assistance. So the programs that we run really are again reinforcing our student centricity to the extent that they are preparing the students for a, a, a successful future, future. The other tenet of our academic model is qualified teachers or qualified lecturers or qualified faculty depending on what your language preference is. The people that facilitate the teaching and learning um, for our students. At our university, we ensure that the lecturers that we recruit, first of all, are passionate about teaching. So they are passionate about our students the interests of our students and the promotion of quality education. They are very experienced with many years of not just academic but also industry practice. And this helps because our students are for the most part going to, to be working in the real, real life environment either as workers or entrepreneurs with their own businesses. So it helps when you have a, a lecturer who has worked in the, in the industry. Our lecturers are people that are digitally active. They are able to use multiple means of facilitating the teaching and learning, including the latest technologies, you know, using the internet, uh, gadgets, tablets, and what have you. Importantly, they are able to impart the skills that I mentioned earlier on. They are themselves critical thinkers, people that are also committed to lifelong learning. Our lecturers undertake a certificate in teaching and learning so that they are always up to date with the latest methodologies of facilitating teaching and learning themselves uh, to, en to enable them to, to teach our students effectively. There are people with a strong work ethics. I think today we always hear stories of, of le lecturers involved in, uh, in what you would call unscrupulous uh, behavior. I think one university recently was in the newspapers for 
releasing nearly 50 uh, lecturers or, or, or staff on the basis of, of, of uh, things such as absconding from duty and the like. So our lecturers are people that have got a strong work ethic and we ensure that they are aligned with our values of integrity, responsibility, innovation, respect, excellence, um, and the like. The other tenet of our academic model, which again differentiates us from the other institutions that are also offering the services of teaching and learning, is our learning platform, our education technology. Cavendish University Uganda has invested in a learning platform that is proprietary, but also uh, fast in this market. This technology enables blended learning for our students, whereby students have got a chance for face-to-face -face engagement with their lecturers, but also they can have out-of-class study situations with on various platforms, including tablets, personal computers, and the rest. The learning on these platforms is convenient because you can decide what time you want to study, if you are the sort of person that is working, you can choose what time to work and what time to study to complete your tasks that are assigned by the lecturers. The technology enables virtual class engagement amongst students on common fora where questions and comments can be posted. It facilitates, it facilitates as well assessment, online assessment. And here you can have quizzes, but you can also have um, more lengthy assignments. And other things that can practically enable you, a student to understand their subject, videos, um, testimonials, and, and many other things that can help practically to, to enable the student to understand their subject. Again, the platform enables flexible learning where courses can be undertaken in a modular way according to the schedules of the student. So you, you could have a student doing three courses at a time or four courses at a time but ultimately, the exam that is sat is the same. And depending on, on uh, how quick, how uh, active the student is, you could still complete your studies at the same time, irrespective of the mode of study that you choose, be it uh, distance learning or campus-based, what we call face-to-face -face or contact mode or a blended form for working adults as we have uh, bachelor programs for working adults. Before I go to the next two tenets of our academic model, our, di our different way in which we undertake our teaching and learning, I will go to your comments and questions. And Taban Thomas, is asking when we are opening an examination center in Juba in South Sudan. Thomas, I would uh, assure you that we are, that South Sudan is very key to us. It's one of our biggest sources of students and we would like to be able to facilitate distance learning for our students in South Sudan. As to when we will have an examination center, I know we have started conversations with various stakeholders you will agree with me that exams are a very delicate matter, both in terms of ensuring that we are getting out the right uh, student products, but also for quality assurance 
in terms of standards for our industry. As uh, you know, we are regulated by the National Council for Higher Education. So exams are, are one of the ways in which we test the effectiveness and quality of our teaching and learning. And therefore, we have got to be compliant of set standards and conversations around how we can fulfill those set standards are ongoing at the moment. And hopefully in the near future, Thomas, you will be able to see us in uh, Juba with an examination center so you don't have to travel or colleagues uh, from South Sudan don't have to travel very long distances. Just going to a couple of other comments. There is Okwena asking, are the facilities close to the university? Yes, indeed. The facilities for accommodation that uh, Okwena you had asked earlier on about are close to the university. They are typically, you know, somewhere about 100 to maybe uh, 500 meters from our university. A few might be a kilometer, maybe two kilometers away. It depends on the kind of quality that somebody is uh, seeking out. Um, issues with uh, affordability, but there is a wide range of, of, of accommodation facilities that are within our campus environment. Then um, Mustafa Osman is asking when the graduation is. The graduation, as I mentioned earlier on, is within the month of, of uh, March. I wanted to quickly point to a question that Suleiman Saeed is, is uh, posing on when is the next intake. So our university has got three intakes. It has an intake in January, it has another intake in May, and another intake in September. So as we speak, we are in the month of January and there's an active intake that is ongoing. Registration ends on the 25th of February, but we encourage students to come and register ahead because classes begin on the 28th of this month, which is in about 12 days from now. And you know at our university we track class attendance, so it helps that uh, you come in time and you, you have enough time to prepare yourself. William Pan says, my sincere greetings from South Sudan, Jonglei State, Bor, to the entire family of CEU, especially the Faculty of Social Economic Sciences, which he's calling says, the administrators and all the lecturers, thank you for today's live video. Thanks, William, for joining us on today's live session. Mustafa Osman is, asked, is saying, Cavendish, you, you've really made me a very competitive person, so thank you for giving me such good knowledge and directing me the best path. I think this is very, very uh, good evidence, uh, Mustafa, that you are posting out there of the big efforts that we are making at our university to ensure that our students are prepared to be responsible, educated, and particularly employable, and entrepreneurial. It is always good to hear from our former students. I wish you would also add what exactly you are doing so that we can, uh, we can get a feel of your actual situation. Muhammad Salisu Khalid says success begins at CUU. I told you earlier on our dear audience that CUU is Cavendish University, Uganda. Then Godwin Defer says, He's listening from Solizi House, Lumumba Avenue. Good, uh, good to know, Godwin, that uh, you managed to join us for today's live session. Mariel Gabriel de Akawon says, how can I study at Kajwok, defunct Warap headquarters? Can you create embassy examinations to be conducted at embassy in South Sudan? I imagine, Maria, that you're referring to the Ugandan embassy in South Sudan. Um, just to say we have had preliminary conversations with various authorities, government authorities here in Uganda, as well as authorities in South Sudan, with the aim of having um, examination facilitation for our students, our distance learning students, that is, from South Sudan. In the near future, I am positive that we will have feedback for you, Mariel, 
and your colleagues from South Sudan who have been posing a question on examination centers in, uh, in South Sudan. I'm still requesting you to uh, invite your fellow colleagues to join for today's session, where, as I mentioned earlier on at the beginning of uh, today's live chat, I am discussing the matter of why choose Cavendish University. And I explained that we are unique in the way we offer our teaching and learning and create big value for our students because we transform them into responsible, educated, employable, and entrepreneurial citizens. I will go to the fifth pillar of our university, of our university's academic model, how we are different from the others, and that is our responsiveness to needs. We're a university whose management is very responsive to needs. We pay great attention to what feedback we get from our students. Our management is innovative. I think we have shown that we have been able to bring online many new products that we are fast in this, uh, in, in this market. Uh, here we'll talk about our distance learning product, which is very unique, that involves the use of uh, education technology, uh, that enhances convenience, flexibility, but also depth in terms of the quality of the education, the material that is loaded on our education platforms, the learning platforms. It has been prepared by experts, so to that extent we are innovative. But also we are participative. We engage with our students from time to time, and next week we'll be having the student orientation. My Vice Chancellor, Professor John Mugisha, likes to remark that I think he studied at Makerere University for his bachelor's uh, degree and he never had a chance to ever meet once the Vice Chancellor. Yet at our university, the space between us and our students is so narrow that he gets a chance to interface with our students from time to time. I think it is, it is useful uh, in terms of mentoring, but also pointing our, our students to what they should be doing in order to succeed. And little wonder, our motto says that uh, success begins at Cavendish University. So we are very participative. We are results driven as a university. I think there are a few places you will find where performance requirements are at the level as they are at our university across board for our students but also for our staff both academic as well as administrative staff in this way we excel in terms of providing our students for their teaching and learning requirements we also uh, provide specific student support for instance students that require additional tutoring either because they didn't understand well what was taught in class or because they reported late uh, for their intake to start classes we undertake specific measures in involving our students but also our staff to tutor these students to bring them to the same level as their colleagues in their cohort and this is quite unique to our university uh, that's why i would say confidently that uh, we are very responsive to the needs of our students i'll try to pick up on some of the comments and questions that are coming in someone is talking about inter-university uh, about football Okay, so I'll come back to the, the to Yak L on, on, on football. Kajang Moses Amoti is, is, is asking the question that uh, is CUU creating a body that brings together staff and alumni of the institution like how it is happening in Makere for the good of our institution? Thanks, Moses, for raising that, uh, that question because I mentioned earlier on 
to those who started uh, today's live session that indeed we are one of a few universities in Uganda that have got an alumni association. It is fully constituted, it has got its chairman, it has got uh, a secretary general, it has got a, a link on our website. If you go to our website, you'll be able to go uh, under student life, alumni affairs, and you will see a whole host of alumni that we are involved with from time to time. You can also see what uh, students in your class, if you are, you are an alumnus of our university, what your colleagues uh, in your cohort are now doing. We've tried to profile some of them. Or a formal engagement for our, our, our alumni. 2018, which was last year, we had uh, our alumni dinner at the Serena Hotel, the prestigious Serena Hotel in Kampala. And we had representatives from South Sudan, from Rwanda, from Nigeria, and elsewhere. It's a good networking platform that I encourage our prospective students to take advantage of. You never know, you could learn a new skill or even gain a new job as a result. Salisu Malami is asking when we are starting a master's degree in information technology. Well, I explained earlier on that there is a process that leads to the start of new programs. It is quite rigorous, um, but we think that it is a program that we may consider. We actually have accreditation for it, depending on our assessment of its uh, the demand, the employment prospects, we will be uh, having some conversations around it. Again, I need to mention that at our university, which is unique, as I mentioned earlier on, we only offer programs that are, that are market relevant. So we always ensure that we assess our programs for market relevance before we, we embark on teaching them. Salisu Malami says, I'm currently doing my NYSC with the Department of ICT Federal Medical Center, Gusau, Nigeria. Thank you, CU, for making me who I am today. Great, Salisu. It's great to hear that you are you have started out well in uh, in uh, in such a prestigious center. Marial Gabriel is asking. Uh, that I'm, he's saying that I'm happy to have interacted with you. Please, can you create agriculture postgraduate masters, especially in, in agronomy? I graduate from Dr. John Garan Memorial University of Science and Technology and wanted to further my career in agronomy. The explanation that I just made a short while ago on the master of, Interna in, of information technology holds. We will consider the program that you're proposing to us and we are taking note of your your requests obviously because i said earlier on that we are very responsive so at a, at a point uh, in the future we we can consider that program it would be sort of a new faculty i imagine or a new department because we currently don't offer agricultural sciences we offer health sciences ICT, IT, IT sciences um, under the Faculty of Science and Technology. So that probably requires more effort. Malika Gar is asking when classes are starting, and classes start on the 28th of January, which is in about 10, 12 days from now. Ivo Ruheka says, thank you, sir, for your good explanation about Cavendish University. I really appreciate about the university programs, as you explained. What I can share to my friends is Cavendish University now is, is the one among the best, is one of the best universities. Joseph Muramuzi says, thanks, David. When is the Bachelor of Security Studies coming on board? The explanation that I made earlier in terms of how we, we embark on introducing new programs holds. We will explore all these programs that you have uh, given us, you've introduced us to on, on today's live session with a view of, of seeking to start them if, if they employ, improve the employability and entrepreneurship prospects of our students under this market demand. 
Yeah, so I wanted to, we are coming to the end of today's session with a few minutes left. We have two minutes left. I thought I should touch quickly on the sixth tenet, the sixth pillar of our academic model, which is the efficient processes. So our university ensures that we provide quick, but also co corruption-free examinations as part of our processes. We ensure that if you complete your studies properly, you will graduate with your certificate and transcript in hand on the day of graduation. We ensure that if you are, and, and of course that helps you with your employ, employability and entrepreneurship because you could go and confidently say that you are a, a graduate lawyer and you can start to, 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 to undertake the further studies or to go to the Law Development Center for uh, Advocates Training. Uh, so amongst others, we ensure that among the efficient service uh, processes that we have, we ensure that our students do, in fact, attend their lectures. We track that on a daily basis. We keep a, a record, and this feeds into their sitting exams or, or, or other assessment tests. These things seem obvious, but they are not very obvious in many other institutions within our market, and they require a lot of effort. So. It is, it is always good and gratifying to note that our university staff are involved so much in ensuring that we have got efficient processes, be it things like um, financial, making financial payments for your tuition and fees. You have so many options to do that, and all these help your student experience at our university as part of the six pillars. Again, by wrap up, we encourage all, all of you to uh, visit us on our website, on our Facebook account, and other media channels to explore for yourselves how you could engage with our university and prepare yourselves for the future using our very unique academic approach that I have uh, elaborated in six pillars of being student-centric, of uh, having quality programs, experienced lecturers, smart education technology, a responsive team, as well as efficient processes. I would like to thank you very much again for joining me on today's uh, web live session. I would like to encourage you to attend also the next sessions that uh, either I or my colleagues at the university will facilitate. And I really do not take your time for granted Thanks for those who made comments, uh, those who asked questions, which I hope I was able to answer to. And uh, you have yourselves a very, very great day and a happy new year that should be fruitful. Thank you and have a great day. Bye.